Hello and welcome to another video on indices and in this video we're going to look at indices that have negative bases. So remember the base is the large number, this is called the index, this is the base. So here we're going to look at negative bases. Now the first thing I want you to ponder is are these two things the same? So here we've got negative 3 in brackets and that is being squared and here we don't have the bracket, so this just says negative 3 squared. Are they the same? And the spidey sensors among you may be probably thinking, no, they're not the same, otherwise why would you ask me? And you are correct, these are not the same. So this one here, negative 3 squared, well this is positive 9. And this here, negative 3 squared, is negative 9. Now you may be wondering why on earth are they different? Surely they don't mean exactly the same thing. And no, they do not. There is a big difference between these two things here. And you can check this with a calculator. If you put this into a calculator, you'd get 9. If you put this into a calculator, you will get negative 9. So why is that? And it all comes down to our orders of operation. So if we think back to our orders of operation, so here in the UK, we like to use the acronym BIDMAS. And uh, I know in America, PEMDAS is um, very commonly used, or there might be some other variations. But the B stands for brackets. So this is the first thing we do whenever we're evaluating an expression. Then we've got indices. And we've got our indices. Um, and then D and M, they are the same level. So I'm going to box them because they, are the, they have the same level of priority. So that is division and multiplication and then finally we've got a and s which stand for addition and subtraction and again they have the same level of priority so this here tells us the order in which we perform operations so whenever we see brackets we always look at the brackets first and then we look at the indices and then we deal with the division and multiplication and then finally we deal with any addition and subtraction so this is the same as negative 3 multiplied by negative 3 well, what is negative 3 times negative 3? Well, 3 times 3 is 9, and a negative multiplied by a negative is a positive, so it is positive 9. Now, let's look at this one. How is this any different? So if we look at our orders of operation, we don't have any brackets, but we do have indices. We've got an index here, so what we're going to do is we're going to focus on that first. Okay. So we're not going to look at this negative symbol at the moment. All we're going to look at is this 3 squared. And we know that 3 squared is 9, so it's going to be negative. And then this here, which is 9, so it's negative 9. So the key take home from this is that it is really important that we put brackets around our negative numbers, especially when we're dealing with indices. Because although they look similar, they are completely different. So now we've established that we need to include brackets whenever we're dealing with negative numbers and indices. Let's calculate what these are. So the first one, negative 1 squared, well that is just negative 1 multiplied by negative 1. So when, whenever we're multiplying two negatives together, that becomes a positive. So our answer is positive 1, just 1. Okay, let's look at the next one. We've got negative 1 cubed. So that's the same as negative 1 multiplied by negative 1 multiplied by negative 1. So what is that? Well, a negative times a negative is a positive, but then when we're multiplying that by another negative, that turns our answer back to a negative. So our answer is negative 1. Now let's look at the next one. So negative 1 to the power of 4, so that's negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1. So a negative times a negative is a positive. Multiply that by a negative, that turns our answer back to a negative. And then multiply by another negative, that turns our answer back to a positive. The answer is positive 1. And the last one, negative 1 to the power of 5. So that's negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1. So we're going to go positive, negative, positive, negative. So our answer is going to be negative 1. Now, can you spot a pattern between our indices and our answers? And think carefully about the signs of our answers, so whether they're positive or negative. And the pattern is that if we're raising a negative number to an even power, like in these two cases, we always get a positive answer. However, if we raise a negative number to an odd power, like in these two cases, 
we always get a negative answer. And the reason for this is because whenever we're multiplying by a negative number, it always changes the sign. So we're constantly fluctuating between positive and negatives. So let's say I wanted to calculate negative 1 to the power 127. Now I'm not going to do negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 127 times. That would just take too long. All I need to do is look at the index. And I can see that my index is odd. So I know that the number in my answer is going to be 1, because 1 times anything is always 1. But in terms of the sign, I know that my answer is going to be negative, because we've got an odd index. So my answer is going to be negative 1. So with that in mind, what I'd like you to do is pause the video and see if you can evaluate these five questions here. So the first one, I can see that we've got an odd power. So negative 2 to the power 1. So my power is odd. So I know my answer is going to be negative. So and 2 to the power 1 is just 2. So it's going to be negative 2. Okay, if we look at the next question, we've now got an even power. So my answer is going to be positive. So we can just do 2 times 2, which is 4. So that is my answer, 4. Okay, question 3, we've got an odd power. So my answer is going to be negative this time. So negative 2. So 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, but we know it's going to be negative 8. And you can see that it's going to oscillate between negative and positive. So the next one, we've got a positive, uh, sorry, we've got an even power. So my answer is going to be positive. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16. So our answer is just going to be 16. And finally, we've got an odd power. So again, my answer is going to be negative. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 32, but it's going to be negative 32. Now there are two key things to take away from this video about negative bases. The first one is about whether our index is even or odd, and that determines whether our answer is positive or negative. And the second thing, which is what I spoke about at the very beginning, whenever we are dealing with negative bases, we need to include brackets around our base. Otherwise we'll get a completely different answer. And that was all to do with our orders of operation. So hopefully that made sense. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.